Welcome to the Great Detectives of Old Time Radio. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham. If you have a comment, email it to me, box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives, and check us out on Instagram, instagram.com slash greatdetectives. Today's program is brought to you in part by the financial support of our listeners. You can support the show on a one-time basis at support.greatdetectives.net or become one of our ongoing Patreon supporters for as little as $2 per month at patreon.greatdetectives.net. Now it is time for this week's episode of The Falcon. The original air date September 3rd. 1950, and the title is The Case of the Quarrelsome Quartet. Hello? Yes, this is the Falcon speaking. Oh, Nina. I'm glad you called. Now, you'll have to count me out tonight, Angel. I'm in the middle of a hot deal. Mm-hmm. Some boys I know are interested in the big money, and they figure if we put all our capital in the gun, we ought to make a killing. <laughs> The Kraft Foods Company brings you The Adventures of the Falcon, starring Les Damon. You met the Falcon first in his best-selling novels. Then you saw him in his thrilling motion picture series. Now join him on the air when the Falcon solves... The Case of the Quarrelsome Quartet. Before the Falcon starts on tonight's case... I'd like to say just a word about something extra delicious. Kraft mayonnaise. Here's really true mayonnaise at its finest. One taste will tell you that. Just one taste of delicate, exquisitely flavored Kraft mayonnaise will tell you that here is mayonnaise to delight even the fussiest cook. Try it. Try it and see for yourself. Tomorrow when you shop, get a jar of wonderful tasting Kraft mayonnaise. <laughs> And now, the case of the Quarrelsome Quartet. It's late evening in New York, and in a shabby apartment on Manhattan's west side, a short, heavy-set boy named Dixie Taylor watches his companion, Georgie Reynolds, attack an age-old problem, how to dispose of an empty bottle. But George is equal to the occasion, for spying the fireplace, he comes up with a practical solution. Well, I guess that's one way to get rid of your empty. Anybody ask you, Taylor? No. All right, then shut your face. Hazel? Hey! You want me, George? No, I was just rehearsing. I'm going in for hard calling. Oh, I'm sorry, sweetie. I was busy. Well, I hope I wasn't interrupting anything important. No, honey. Get me another bottle. Well, darling, don't Didn't you Didn't think... I tell you something? All right, George. It's one of my bedroom closets. Well, what are you staring at, Dixie? I was just wondering about Hazel. Well, don't. You're going to do any wondering think about Martinez. Although he'll be here. Yeah, when? He was due an hour ago. Well, maybe he had some trouble finding Saunders. Oh, that's just ducky. What goes on with you guys? Anyway, do I have to well, tell you... That's probably Martinez and Saunders now. Hazel? Yes, George? Didn't you hear that? Oh, I was trying to get... Never mind the alibis, that's... Yeah, just a second. Hello, Hazel. Hello, Mr. Martinez. Your boyfriend here? Yeah, we're in the kitchen. Come on in. Bring your friend with you. Hi, Georgie. Hello, Taylor. Hello, Louie. Well, you took your own sweet time getting here, Martinez. Well, I have a little bit trouble finding Mr. Saunders here. Gentlemen. Bring in a couple of chairs, Hazel. Yes, dear. All right, now go on. Go on. Beat it. But, darling... I said beat it. These fellas and I have some business to discuss. Uh, well, Martinez, did you tell Saunders what I lined up? No, I think was maybe better I leave that for you. It's a snatch, Saunders. A what? A snatch. That's what I thought you said. Well, it's been nice knowing you, gentlemen. Sit down, Saunders. No, thanks. I'm not interested. Cost you something to listen? All right. Ever hear of Big Joe Gallagher? Well, enough to know that if he's the party you got in mind, you can include me out, as the saying goes. Now, don't be a jerk, Saunders. Sure, Gallagher's a big racket's boy, but that's just why we can get away with this. You're crazy. 
Now, look, Martinez, why didn't you tell Let me that... Let Georgie finish. Dixie and I used to work for Gallagher. We know what makes him tick. A guy in his position would never yell copper. Yes, but there's one thing you're overlooking. From what I know of Mr. Gallagher, he never goes anywhere without two or three of his boys. How are you going to separate the wheat from the chaff? I got it all figured out. Gallagher's a ladies' man, see? Now, if a babe were to call him up and arrange a blind date, it's dollars to donuts he'd go for it. I doubt it. Don't tell me. I've seen it work a dozen times. You got the girl? Yeah. Yeah, Hazel, the one who let you in. I suppose she talks. She wouldn't dare. Besides, she doesn't have to know what's going on. I'll tell her the whole thing's a gag. Where do I come in? Hazel will arrange to meet Gallagher at the 49 Club. You and Martinez will pick him up. What about you and Taylor? Now, we can't take a chance. He knows us. Well, what do you say, Saunders? You think this will work, Martinez? Why not? Georgie's got all the angles figured out. (laughs) So it would seem. Okay, gentlemen. Deal me in. Yeah? I'd like to speak to Mr. Gallagher, please. Uh, Who wants him? Well, he wouldn't know me, but you can tell him I'm a friend of Gloria Wilson. I never heard of her. Are you, Mr. Gallagher? Yeah, that's right. Well, Gloria made me promise to look you up when I got to New York. I'm sorry, sister. I don't know anybody by that handle. She was a chorus girl at Pirandello's. Hey, wait a minute, baby. What's your name? Hazel Wall. Uh, you look anything like you sound, Hazel? <laughs> oh, now, really, Mr. Gallagher? No Gallag- kidding, because if you do, I'd like to see you. Uh, I'm afraid that's out of the question, Mr. Gallagher. I'm flying to the coast tonight. Ah, uh-huh. what time? Quarter after one. Well, that still gives us three hours to get acquainted. What do you say, baby? Mm, all right. But uh, you'll have to meet me here. You see, I'm expecting friends. Oh, that's okay. Where are you? It's a little place called the 49 Club. Do you know it? No, but I'll manage. Uh, uh, what color dress are you wearing? Blue. <laughs> My favorite color. Okay, Hazel. I'll see you in 20 minutes. <laughs> Hey, buddy. Uh, who, me? Yeah, you wouldn't happen to have no seen a blonde around, huh? Uh, blue dress? Yeah, that's right. I'm glad to know you, Mr. Gallagher. Oh, uh, who are you? Hazel's cousin. Didn't she tell you we're having a little farewell party in her honor? Well, she said something about friends. Oh, now don't get frightened. We'll be pushing off in a few minutes, and that'll give you enough time to talk to Hazel alone. Uh, where is she? She's in the back room with the rest of the family. Well, let's go. Uh, right down here. Uh, by the way, fella, I don't believe I caught your name. Well, it's the same as Hazel. <laughs> Related on your father's side. Yes, that's right. Oh, uh, here we are. Hi, fellas. Hello, Louie. This is uh, Hazel's friend. Pleasure to know you, Mr. Gallagher. Where's Hazel? Oh, she just stepped out for a minute. Well, well where's the rest of the crowd? Crowd? Yeah, her cousin told me she had a flock of relatives down here. Never really Saunders. He's a big joker. Saunders? I thought his name was Walsh. What goes on here, anyway? Watch him, Saunders. Just keep those hands where they are, Mr. Gallagher. Frisk him, Martinez. Get your hands ah, off me. Ah, don't get excited, Mr. Gallagher. He's bad for your blood pressure. Is he clean? He's now. Good. Would you be kind enough to accompany us, Mr. Gallagher? Oh, no, you're not getting me to walk out of here. Well, as long as you feel... Let me... At the hand of two of Martinez. He said he wasn't walking out of here, and uh, he was right. What's the matter with those guys, anyway? Got the time, Dixie? You asked me that just five minutes ago, George. Now, don't get smart. Think anything could have gone wrong? Not a chance. What'd you tell Galga's wife? Just what you told me. I said we had a husband, and if she wanted them back, she was to dig up a hundred grand. Yeah, maybe I should have gone for it myself instead of sending Saunders a martini. What are you worried about, Georgie? They managed the snatch, all right. Yeah, but how do I know that they're George. able... George. I'll get it. Hello, George. You got it, Saunders? What does this bike look like? All right, let me have it. How'd it go off? Oh, the clock works. 
As soon as Mrs. Gallagher gives us the money, I give her the key and took her away to find her husband. Oh, nice work, Louie. Yes, I guess congratulations are in order all around. One hundred thousand dollars. Just just think of it. You think of it, Saunders. Because that's as close as you're getting to it. What do you mean, George? Well, I tell you, friend, it's like this. The boys and I had a little talk. And you decided why split four ways, huh? Well, you catch on fast. But didn't you think I'd have anything to say about that? I put away that gun, Saunders. Uh, Yeah. Georgie was only clowning. Yes, I'll bet. You know, I'm a little surprised at you, Dixie. Uh, Look... If, if we were going to double-cross you, you think we'd send you for the dough? Sure, that doesn't make sense, does it? <laughs> no, don't move, Parsi. Just drop the gun. Nice going, Martinez. Well, Mr. Smart Guy, what do you say? <laughs> That's enough, Georgie. Go on, Sardis. Bait it. All right. Gentlemen, if this little get-together hasn't been pleasant, it, it has been informative. Well, I'll be very glad to show you what I learned next time we meet. Hello? Uh, I'm looking for a Michael Waring, private detective called the Falcon. Well, you picked the right place. Oh, are you... Mm-hmm. Come on in, Angel, and... Thank you. Sit down. I suppose I should introduce myself. It's customary. Uh, Well, my name is Hazel Walsh. Hazel Walsh? Ah, that's right. Who recommended me? Well, I remembered hearing about the Falcon years ago. And you filed the information away for this more convenient date, hmm? Uh, Yes. (laughs) Are you available for a case? At $50 a day and expenses, I am. What's your problem? Well, it's really not my problem, Mr. Waring. I'm... A girlfriend of mine is engaged to some man, and she believes that he's done something... uh... Crooked? Of course not. All right, let's call it unethical. Go on. Well, uh, if the man ever was caught, could they force my friend to be a witness against him? They certainly could. Even though she found out about it by accident? Doesn't make any difference, Miss Walsh. Well, isn't there anything she can do? Nope. Only if she were married to him could she refuse to testify. Well, if we got married... I mean, if they got married, I... <laughs> Let's use the first example, Hazel. It'll be easier on us both. Now, look here, Mr. Williams. No, you look, Angel. You're obviously in some sort of a jam. Now, what is it? I tell you, you're wrong. What did your boyfriend do? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. All right. I suppose you tell me his name. It... Uh, Harry Prescott. Come on, Hazel. What's his name? Well, you have no right to question me like this. No, but the police has. Look at... You're not going to call him. No? Well, it, it's George Reynolds. Is he the same Georgie Reynolds who used to run with the Gallagher mob? No. Uh, no, it's not that one at all. Uh-huh. Well, suppose you introduce us and let me see for myself. Hmm? I'm an easy man to convince. sounds as though Mike follows that good old theory that seeing is believing. Of course, that's a pretty smart idea, I think. And it's a good one for everyone to follow when it comes to food. For example, I can tell you how satiny smooth Kraft mayonnaise is. What an amazing, creamy, rich texture it has because of the special way Kraft blends it. But to really appreciate just how smooth Kraft Kitchen Fresh mayonnaise is, get a jar and see for yourself. That way you can taste for yourself, too. You won't have to take my word for it that Kraft mayonnaise is especially good. With a delicate, delightful flavor, the result of careful blending of only the finest oils and eggs, the most fragrant vinegars and spices. Yes, the best way to tell is to taste Kraft mayonnaise yourself. Try it on a cool and colorful salad of hollowed-out tomatoes topped with spicy deviled eggs and garnished with fresh and tangy watercress. It's really delicious. So tomorrow when you shop... Get a jar of Kraft Kitchen Fresh Mayonnaise. Whether you're serving a simple, everyday kind of salad or a fancy company special, you'll enjoy it more with true mayonnaise at its finest. Kraft Mayonnaise. Now back to the adventures of the Falcon. 
Fifteen minutes have passed since Hazel Walsh introduced herself to Mike Waring. And now the two are on their way to Georgie Reynolds' apartment. And strangely enough, Miss Walsh doesn't seem too delighted by the trip. I don't know why I let you talk me into this, Mr. Waring. It's simple, Hazel. You're the kind of girl who's taken such a licking, you could be talked into anything. That's a lie. All right, then why did you bring me here? Because I thought you could help George. Well, if it's the same George I think it is, you'll have to get yourself another boy. Whatever made you tie up with a guy like that? I don't think that concerns you. This the place? Yes. Can I help? No, thanks. Where's the light switch? Uh, a little over to your right. Have you got it? Yep. George! Stop that. I saw him. Now you stay where you are. Is he? Yeah, there's nothing else, but oh, no. Someone gave it to him right through the temple. George! George! Look, when you get a grip on yourself. How can you talk to me like that when my fiancé's been murdered? I can talk to you like that because it's not your fiancé. What? This is a boy named Dixie Taylor. Now will you behave? I believe it, Mr. Wang. There must be some mistake. What's the matter, Hazel? You disappointed it isn't, George? Of course not. Did you know Taylor? Uh, well, he was a friend of George's. I saw him around here once or twice. Who else was a member of this fraternity? Uh, just a man named Louis Martinez. Uh. Well, that's some select group. I've heard of all of them. Did they blackball anyone recently? I don't know what you mean. Did your boyfriend and Martinez cross anyone lately? I don't think so. Hazel, you better stop lying. You don't do it very well. Well, there was a Nick Saunders. Good-looking boy, around 35? Yes. What did they fight about? I don't know. You think Saunders might have killed Dixie? I suppose so. How about George? No. Oh, Hazel, don't be a sucker. You think he'll appreciate your loyalty? Why don't you ask him, Larry? Georgie... All right, I will. Isn't it nice of her not to suspect you, George? Not to suspect me of what? Take a look under that blanket. Oh. Who did it? That's just what I was asking. You got any suggestions? Nary a one. Say, who invited you here, anyway? She didn't. Oh, is that so? Uh, darling, I was only thinking of you. Now, that's the truth, George. Never have I seen a woman show so much concern. All right, Waring, beat it. I don't need you. How about Hazel? She don't need you either. Go on, Hazel. Tell him. Uh, I made a mistake, Mr. Waring. I'm sorry. You mean that? Yes. Okay. So be it. Oh, when the police show up, tell them I have to leave. It'll huh? be a pleasure. Listen, Georgie, I, I know what you're going to say. Do you? Oh, darling, I was only thinking of you. I, I know what you, Dixie Martinez, did to Saunders. That's why I went to Waring. Well, that was smart... But I was worried about Saunders. And I'm worried about you, Hazel. You think you'll ever learn to keep your mouth shut? Or do I have to teach you? Oh. Hello, Corbett. This is Mike Waring. Ah, what's on your mind, Mike? Listen, what kind of caper has Georgie Reynolds pulled recently? Well, there's some talk going around that Big Joe Gallagher was snatched last week. Oh, that's crazy, Sergeant. I saw him on 48th Street yesterday. I know, but that's the story we got. According to one of my pet stoolies, his missus laid out a hundred grand to get him back. You think Georgie Reynolds was behind it? Wouldn't be at all surprised. Well, can't you do anything? You can tell me how when we got no proof. And Mrs. Gallagher hasn't seen fit to make a complaint. Was Nick Saunders in on it? You seem to know more about it than I do. What do you know about Saunders? Not quite enough, Sergeant. I'll let you know the minute I learn more. Oh, by the way, uh, there is a body over at Georgie Reynolds' apartment. Go over and pick it up like a good fellow, will you? Yes? Hello, Saunders. Remember me? Oh, sure, sure. You're the uh, Falcon, aren't you? Mm-hmm. Can I come in? Why not? Sorry, I can't offer you anything. Well, you never know unless you try. All right, Waring, what's on your mind? Well, I heard you and George Reynolds had a little trouble last night. You must be thinking of two other guys. Well, what gets me is why you took it out on Taylor. Taylor? Yeah, haven't you heard? He's dead. Not my old pal Dixie. Well, 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 what do you know? 
I know you'd better have a pretty good alibi handy. Come on, Saunders, get your coat. We're going to headquarters. Uh, just brief me on one thing, Waring. You're a private detective, aren't you? That's right. Now, where do you get off pushing people around? It's my hobby. You going to get your coat or will you go like that? Oh, act your age. Put away the gun, Saunders. Put it away. Wait, before I... Cut it out. Go on, drop it. No, I'm... Drop it. it. All right, now, what do you say, friend? Do we take that little ride I mentioned? Okay, Waring. But don't be surprised if someday I return the favor. <laughs> Is there a guy named Mike Waring here? That's me, Inspector. Come in here. I want to talk to you. Okay. See you later, Sergeant. Yeah, bad. Sit down, Waring. Oh, thanks. Sergeant Corbett tells me you're the boy who brought in Saunders. Yeah, it was a pleasure. Well, I'm glad you got a kick out of it, because I just talked to headquarters about you. What for? To see how they feel about attempted blackmail. What are you talking about? Didn't you try to shake down Saunders? Is that what he claimed? No, I can put two and two together myself. Well, you ought to go back to school, Inspector. There's something wrong with your arithmetic. I doubt it. When you start shoving a guy around just because he's got a record, there's only one answer. Oh, you're crazy. I tell you, Saunders killed Dixie Taylor. How? He shot him, that's how. From Philadelphia? Oh, what are you talking about? Going to the coroner, Dixie Taylor died at 8.30 p.m. So what? Well, at 8.25, Saunders was picked up by the Pennsylvania State Police for carrying a rod without a license. And he wasn't released until two hours later. Now, who doesn't know his arithmetic? Hello, Mike. Huh? Hazel. How did you get in here? The superintendent let me in. I've got to talk to you. Now, that makes us even, Angel, because I want to talk to you. Look, you've got to drop the case. Now, that raises a problem. How can I drop something I've never been paid for in the first place? I don't understand. I mean, if I'm going to work for free, I might as well do it for myself. You can't do that. Well, I'd like to see someone stop me. What's Georgie's phone number? Why? Because I want to talk to him. What about? The murder of Dixie Taylor. He doesn't know anything about it. Are you kidding? Now, what's the number? Come on, Hazel, I'm not clowning. It's Raleigh 4099. Now, cheer up, baby. When I get through with Mr. Reynolds, he won't ever lay a hand on you again. You don't hear me complain. <laughs> Next, you'll be telling me you love the guy. I do. Hello. Uh, is that you, Reynolds? Oh, uh, this is Luis Martinez. Who are you? Mike Waring. Let me talk to George. I'm afraid that he's out of the question. Listen, Martinez, if I have to come over there... He still won't do you any good. He's dead. He's what? Yeah. Someone fed him a dose of strychnine about an hour ago. And somehow, we didn't seem to agree with him. <laughs> I don't believe it. Martinez was lying. I don't suppose we go over and check. Oh, George, this... Oh, come on, Hazel. Get a grip on yourself. You're better off without him. Oh, how can you talk that way? Because it's the truth. He was no good. That's a lie. Oh, don't give me that. You knew he was the brain behind the big Joe Gallagher snatch. No, you're wrong. Who are you kidding? Well, say, so incidentally, what happened to the loot? The loot? The ransom money Mrs. Gallagher paid off. How would I know? Well, you would if anybody would. You can't keep it, Angel. I didn't intend to. Then where is it? Well, they, they didn't tell me, but I, I watched them through the keyhole. Where did they put it? Under the middle cushion of the sofa in George's apartment. Okay, let's get it before someone else gets the same idea. I wouldn't be surprised if we're a little late now. You know what Mike said just now about getting there first? Sounds like the race that usually goes on at my house for the last piece of cold chicken in the refrigerator. But a chicken sandwich sure makes a swell snack, especially when you put lots of Kraft mayonnaise on the bread. Mmm, the delicate flavor of Kraft mayonnaise is just exactly what you want. And Kraft mayonnaise is so creamy, rich, and smooth. Just try it. For a grand sandwich spread as well as for fine salad, there's nothing like true mayonnaise at its finest. Kraft Kitchen Fresh Mayonnaise. <laughs> Now back to the adventures of the Falcon. 
A half hour has passed since Mike Waring learned that with the recent death of Georgie Reynolds and the earlier demise of Dixie Taylor, the original quartet was now working as a duo on $100,000 worth of loose notes. And now as we rejoin the team of Mark and Hazel, they're making their entrance at Georgie Reynolds' apartment. But Hazel seems to be suffering with a bad case of stage fright. What's the matter, Angel? Having trouble? I guess I'm a little nervous. Oh, here, let me try. Ah, come in, folks. Louis. What do you expect? Shut the door, Waring. Look, Martinez. I said shut the door. Now raise them high. All right, you don't have to worry. I'm clean. I don't believe in taking chances. What's the matter? No sporting blood? Yeah, I guess I'm yellow. Too bad Georgie didn't have as much sense. Where is he? Move the club chair. What? Yeah, go on. He's behind it. That won't bring him back. You killed him? Well, while we are on this subject, where were you at 11.30? She was waiting for me in my apartment. Mm, nice. Look, you better watch that mouth. And you better watch yours. All right, Hazel, where is it? Where is what? The dough we got from Gallagher. I don't know. Don't give me that. I want it, honey bunch. And nothing's going to keep me from it, understand? I wouldn't count on that, Louis. What? No, no, no. Don't bother turning around, Martinez. It's only me. Listen, Saunders. Don't mind if I do, Martinez. But first, drop the gun. That's a sweetheart. You want me to pick it up? No, no, no. Don't trouble yourself, Waring. I can manage. Oh, what happened to Georgie? The same thing that happened to Dixie Taylor. And... He was such a sweet guy, wasn't he? Oh, by the way, when I walked in here, Martinez was asking you a question. I don't remember your answering it. Would you like to now? You'll never see a penny of that money. Come on, come on, Hazel. We're wasting time. Where is it? You better tell him, Angel. I think he means business. I do, and make no mistake about it. Uh, it's under the middle cushion of the sofa. What? Stay where you are, Martinez. I'll do my own checking. Oh, now, isn't that pretty? Listen, Saunders. I'm afraid I haven't the time, Louis. You'll have to find it, Saunders. What? Get down, Hazel! Oh. Hey. Had enough, Saunders? Yes, he has. Oh, hello, Sergeant. Hi, Mike. The inspector sent me around to apologize. Oh, what happened? Twenty minutes ago, a call came through from Philly that that Saunders they picked up there was this guy's cousin. I thought there was something screwy playing. Well, if you fellas don't mind... Uh, just a minute. Where are you going, Martinez? Well, I just figure it's no point of my hanging around just now. Well, you better get used to it, Louie. You're going to do quite a bit of it from now on. What are you talking about? You killed Dixie Taylor and George Reynolds. You're crazy. Well, maybe you're right. Here I've got you hanging when any kid knows that in New York they burn you. All right, Sergeant, prove it to him. Mike. Oh, don't say it, Angel. But I was just going to ask... Ask me to explain things. Hmm? Well, yes. Well, I guess you're entitled to it. You see, this was a modern version of thieves falling out. When Louis Martinez saw how George double-crossed Saunders, it didn't take him long to figure that he was next. So he decided to beat your boyfriend to the punch. First, he killed Dixie, which made it look bad for Saunders. And then, to ensure his bet, he killed George. Then why did he wait at the house for us? Well, he had to. You were the only one who knew where the money was stashed. And until he got it, he committed two murders for nothing. Well, couldn't have Saunders have done that? Mm -mm. I knew Martinez was the killer long before Saunders ever showed up. How? Well, Martinez told us he hadn't called the police, so obviously there was no autopsy performed. Yet he knew exactly what poison killed George and the time he got it. Remember he told me over the phone that George had been fed a dose of strychnine an hour before I called? Mm -hmm. Well, now, how would he know that unless he was right there feeding it to him? Um, shall I tell you something? I wish you would. I lied to you about loving George, you see. Otherwise, I was afraid you might suspect me. Oh, I couldn't afford to, Angel. Uh, why not? Well, you're much prettier than Martinez and Saunders. Oh, I, I don't understand. Well, you see, I figured to wrap up this case around midnight. And if you were guilty, what would I do for a date? <laughs> Folks, here's sure, pure enjoyment for the whole family. Real, honest-to-goodness malted, made with Kraft chocolate-flavored malted milk. Easy to fix, too. You just make a tasty paste of Kraft malted milk in the bottom of a tall glass. Then fill the glass brimful of milk and stir it. Enjoy the best malted you ever put to your lips. Include Kraft malted milk on your shopping list for Tuesday. Enjoy a Kraft malted for snacks, with meals, or before bedtime. But be sure it's Kraft malted milk at your food store now. The case of the worried champion. The case of the worried champion. That's the title of next week's Adventure of the Falcons. 
when Mike Waring learns that a boxing title is something a number of people are willing to shoot for. So be sure to listen next week at this same time to another exciting adventure of the Falcon, brought to you by the Kraft Foods Company. The adventures of the Falcon are based on the famous character created by Drexel Drake, produced by Bernard L. Schubert, written today by Gene Wang, and directed by Richard Lewis. Music was by Arlo. Les Damon was starred as the Falcon with Amzie Strickland as Hazel. This is Jay Jackson speaking. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company. Welcome back. Now, this is more like it. You had some really interesting voices in here with both uh, Jackson Beck and Larry Haynes, as well as quite a few twists. I also thought the Falcon was given a bit more to do than he was in last week's episode. Uh, AMZ Strickland was actually a really solid actress with a lot of roles in New York radio, including playing one of the latter uh, Margot Lanes on The Shadow. And we also have a new sponsor, which is why we continue to have more episodes. Uh, Kraft was one of old-time radio's most venerable sponsors. Their two most famous sponsored programs were the Kraft Music Hall uh, and the Great Gildersleeve. Uh, the Kraft Music Hall was hosted by a variety of hosts, including Paul Whiteman, as well as its final host, Al Jolson. But it was probably best known for the years in which Bing Crosby presided over it. The Kraft Music Hall had ended in 1949, so there was room in the ad budget for uh, the Falcon, which would have been quite a bit uh, less expensive. And of course, The Great Gildersleeve was one of radio's great sitcoms. Uh, much like the one me in episode, the commercials do have an awkward transition, and I noticed the, the way the announcer pronounced mayonnaise as mayonnaise. While I get that's phonetically correct, everyone I've heard pronounces it mayonnaise or mayo. Has the pronunciation changed or is this a regional thing? I did actually find a video teaching ESL learners how to pronounce uh, the, the word and it essentially gave them three pronunciations for mayonnaise and told them all of them were fine and to pick whichever or just to say mayo. So I guess whatever the differences are, they're all okay to say. I am probably have more trouble with this idea from a ling linguistic perspective when it comes to learning a language. Uh, because I'm troubled by that advice. I, I took a little language in college, Russian. I was not particularly good, and I, I only remember two phrases of it. But learning a language, uh, I think, was always a challenge to me. I don't know how it works for learning English, but it's such a challenge that I wouldn't want to be told, okay, you have four different pronunciations you can choose for this creamy spread. And, you know, just pick the one you want. I mean, I don't have time to think about it. Just pick one pronunciation and tell it to me. I just want to focus on learning the one word. You know, there's enough to learn in this language. Can we not have to spend a lot of time thinking about options for the creamy spread? But I don't know, maybe given options is better when learning English. Well, at any rate, we turn to listener comments and feedback. And Margaret writes over on YouTube, Mr. Graham, I enjoy your content and accents. Great detectives indeed. Well, thank you so much, Margaret. I appreciate it. Well, now it's time to thank our Patreon supporter of the day. Thank you to John and Christine, Patreon supporters since March of 2018, currently supporting the podcast at the detective sergeant level of $7.14 or more per month. Thank you so much for your support. It's truly appreciated. And that will do it for today. If you're enjoying the podcast, please follow us using your favorite podcast software. If you're listening on YouTube, be sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and mark the notification bell.
We'll be back next Monday with another episode of The Falcon, but join us back here tomorrow for the start of another Yours Truly Johnny Dollar serial where... So on. Mort, I don't get it. Neither did I. So I sent a company accountant out to San Francisco on the QT and put him to work on the claims files. And we found out, Johnny. You found out what? That Ed's accounts had been doctored for some time. What? Johnny, in the months before he was killed, he'd embezzled nearly $80,000. Ed Morgan? Ed Morgan. I don't believe it. He did it. You might as well accept the fact. Anybody else, yes, anybody else. But not Ed. For one thing, money didn't mean that much to him. I know. We were always joshing him about living like an old hermit instead of a young bachelor. Well, then why would he do it, steal $80,000 after all these years of being honest? What would he want that would cost that much money? That's exactly what I wish you'd find out. Now, wait a second, Mort. Wait a second. This is one I... I hope you'll be with us then. In the meantime, do send your comments to box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and check us out on Instagram, instagram.com slash greatdetectives. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham, signing off.